I got an email that complained about my um, uh, some of the Monday morning quarterbacking in terms of uh, in terms of the Democrats, um, and in part for not ensconcing uh, abortion rights. I can tell you this: that uh, Barack Obama did promise it would be a day one type of thing in 2007. I do understand that by the time you get into um, uh, the White House, you don't have a um, filibuster-proof majority until uh, well through two, uh, the you know halfway through 2009. Then you are attempting to, and then you lose it because of Kennedy. So you have a window there, um, and you're trying to do health care, and you're also trying to do the financial crisis. But it is a reality that through the 90s into the early aughts, you had people, Hillary Clinton, others, many members of the Democratic Party who were trying to like pussyfoot around abortion and you know say it's icky and this and that, we're not gonna do anything. 56%, some instances more, support the right for a woman to choose an abortion. And this is without the loss of that right, when it's just hypothetical. This is a, uh, it is important for Democrats to get out in front of this politically, both to do something to the extent that they can, there's limited reason, things that they can do, but they can do some things. But as a political matter, it is essential the Democrats at least attempt to do stuff. Here is Vice President Harris. Remember now, we are five weeks out from the leak of the Dobbs ruling. Virtually no one thought there wasn't a chance that Roe v. Wade wasn't going to be rolled back. If you didn't know this when they heard it in, um, in the oral arguments, you didn't know it when they granted it certiorari, if you didn't know it when they allowed Texas to have its law in untouched back in December. And you, you surely must have known this could be a contingency we should plan for it. Let's hear what the, the vice president has uh, in, in relating what the White House has done to plan for this. Sorry. This is uh, Vice President Harris on with Dana Bash on CNN. No audio. All right, we're working on this. Give us one second. What do you say to Democratic voters who argue, wait a minute, we worked really hard to elect a Democratic president yeah. and vice president, yeah. Democratic-led House, yeah. a Democratic-led Senate. Do it now. But do what now? I, what now? I mean, we, we need, we, listen, what we did, we extended the child tax credit for the well, first I'm year. I'm sorry, when I say right? do what, yeah. do it now, yeah. act uh, legislatively to make abortion rights legal. We feel the same way. It, do it now. Congress needs to do it now in terms of permanently putting in place a, a, a clear indication that it is the law of the land that women have the ability and the right to make decisions about their reproductive care, and the government does not have the right to make those decisions for a woman. All right. So you can see that um, she is uh, correctly saying this is the legislature's job to do it. But ignoring that there is any role for the White House to play in pushing the legislature. Not the president is meeting and trying to convince them to get rid of the filibuster. Mansion but cinema. All right, maybe it's not going to happen. But, but, but she's not saying that there's any effort being made. She's also not saying the word abortion. Still afraid, afraid of the word abortion. You cannot cower and win this fight. It has not worked. It has failed because you cannot energize the people you need to energize. 
I understand she wants more votes. They, we want more votes for uh, 2022. That's all well and good. But you need to show that you're doing something or attempting to do something. And it's as if they have no idea that there's any executive action they can take. And so Dana Bash reminds her. Here it is. Every statement that the attorney general has made. Can the administration expand abortion access or abortion services on federal land? Meaning provide the access on federal land that might be in and around states that ban abortion? I think that what is most important right now is that we ensure that the restrictions that the states are trying to put up um, that would prohibit a woman from exercising what we still maintain is her right, that we do everything we can to empower women to not only seek but to receive the care where it is available. Is a federal land uh, one of those options? I mean, it's not right now what we are discussing, but I will say that when I think about what is happening in terms of the states, we have to also recognize, Dana, that we are 130 odd days away from an election, which is going to include Senate races, right? P part of the issue here is that the court has acted, now Congress needs to act. But we, if you count the votes, don't appear to have the votes in the Senate. Well, there's an election happening in 130 odd days. I'm taking, for example, thinking of, of a Senate race in Georgia. All right, look, you know what? I, I don't even need to hear this anymore. I mean, like, yes, everything she's saying about these elections are absolutely correct. And they should absolutely follow what she said in vague generalities. We need to make sure that within the context of these restrictions that women have access to um, what the care that they need. There's not many options that the White House has to make sure that that happens. And it seems to be that five weeks after this brief leaks, they haven't had a single conversation about it in the White House or alternatively have said, we're going to send the vice president out there, but we're not going to authorize her to mention any of it. Even if it's directly raised with her, this is just bizarre. Like, what were they trying to accomplish with that? It's just bizarre. I mean, I don't even know how, like, politically speaking, I don't know how you send her out there and, and, and without answers to the, the obvious questions. I mean, th they read, they get the internet at the White House. The Hyde Amendment says you cannot provide funds to pay providers for abortions. However, on federal land, federal buildings, a state ban on abortion would not hold. You could lease these buildings at cost for free, maybe. To abortion providers, you could do it through the military bases that we have in, in every state in the country. Or you could get up there as the vice president and say, we have been talking to DOJ lawyers to see if we could do those things. You don't just blow it off and say we have an election because of course we have an election. And, and, and here's the thing that is so twisted about this, too. Even if you are in the White House and you're thinking, we can't do anything about this, we need, we need to hope that this energizes people to vote for us. And your strategy is, is to win in 2022 because of abortion rights. But at the same time, you f believe we cannot mention the words abortion. We cannot stir the pot. We somehow need to be able to have the pot stirred, have our base energized, but not be caught on camera in any way energizing our base. It simply doesn't work that way. If you, if, and I am all in favor of leveraging this for uh, the midterm elections, but you cannot do it unless you are showing that, A, you are making every effort possible to expand access, which in no way going to diminish the anger 
because this is a right that has been rolled back by the Supreme Court. And B, the more it is talked about, the more controversy you create, if you were to start saying, if you were to, if you were to, uh, as commander in chief, order one or 50 or 100 or 200, or like I say, one military base to start providing abortions in places where women do not have access to it, in a state that has been banned, I will tell you what will happen. You will create controversy. You will have the primary issue of this election be abortion, and it is a winner for Democrats. This is political malpractice, and we know it is because we have seen it fail time and time again for decades. For decades. And so when you hear those uh, activists yesterday uh, talking to MSNBC, we see AOC talk about we need a change in leadership. I mean, that's what they're talking about. They're not saying we need magicians. We just need people who either, who both A, exhaust every effort possible, and B, even in losing in pursuit of those efforts, leverage it for electoral success so that they can win the future fight. And it just simply doesn't happen. It's amazing how sort of revealing those cliched comments can be, because there's two things you can say. You can say, we're not looking at that, or we are looking at that. You don't have to be sincere about it if you say we are looking at that, but just say, yeah, oh, we're looking at everything. You Instead create just, the illusion yeah. that you're doing something. At the very least, even, you know, like, I don't know how the Supreme Court would rule on that uh, question of it being federal buildings. It may, the, the, there may be lawyers in the DOJ are saying that we shouldn't do this because it's gonna implicate blah, 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 which I understand. Or, and, and there's no doubt, there's a lot of things that people presume the White House can do that is far more complicated. And so they avoid expending resources on it. But there is no, there is a finite, a finite amount of ability to say, we're looking into that. And that's something that's absolutely, uh, and if we can, and if we can put, if we can activate military bases to do it, we will do it. Right, like, like you said, the, the question is, is not whether like they can actually tangibly, even if they can't tangibly leverage before the midterms, look like you're trying to leverage like do do something because you're to activating leverage. the yeah. issue like oh we are actively trying to do something there are so many people who are disillusioned thinking that because of the, our leadership we cannot do anything look like you're trying to do something instead of asking dana bash what you think we should do people have to understand that 10 days ago the election was about gas prices and inflation and joe biden being old and uh, cops and parents and transgender um, athletes in high school. And today the Democrats have the ability to make this about a fundamental right that has been stripped away from approximately 50% of the population that has existed in this country for 50 years. And all of the subsidiary rights or subsequent rights that derived from that ruling into in 1973 including gay marriage including the ability to have consensual sex with an adult regardless of what their gender is relative to yours including the rights to, have, to use contraception and the question is will the democrats do anything to make sure that re remains in, in, in the front pages and in the front of, of voters' minds. So far, it seems like no. Because they had five weeks to plan this out. And it's something they could have worked out in three hours, it feels like. We just need to get into a room, decide what we're doing. Spend more time planning the rundown of the Boston live show, for God's sakes. Really uh, incredibly frustrating. 